eagerness. Now, we are to be overseers, according to verse 3. Look at verse 3. But not overlords. Look what he says. Not yet as lording it over those allotted to your charge, but proving to be examples to the flock. Be overseers, not overlords. Be an example. This is how you change somebody else's life. You show them how. People come to you because of what you do, not because of what you say. I mean, people come to you because of your example. You know. And... uh, That's so true. Because if you accomplish something and they're trying to accomplish, they want to come to you and say, how did you accomplish that? And it's true in the spiritual realm. Be an example. The contrast is between dictatorship and leadership. Leadership is influence. And to have an influence upon others, you must be an example. You cannot drive sheep. I thought it necessary to say that because we live in cowboy country. You cannot drive sheep. The church needs leaders who serve. The church needs leaders who serve and servants who lead. And Jesus is our example. He said, I came to serve. That's why he came. He is our example. And so what does the pastor need? He needs a vital relationship with Jesus Christ. Number two, he needs a loving concern for the flock. And lastly, lastly, he needs a desire to please Christ alone. And that's what you need too. A desire to please Christ alone. Somebody said one time, boy, I'll bet you have quite a time trying to keep all those people happy, don't you? (laughs) And the answer is no. That's not my calling. My calling is to please him. And I commit the rest to him. And I know there's no way in the world I can keep Hundreds and hundreds of people happy. My job is to please him. And you must know that as you go through life, you will not keep everybody happy in your life. You just won't. There's going to be people that are going to say, that was a terrible decision. (laughs) And you will have to live with that. A desire to please Christ Why? Because, listen to me, he is the shepherd. He is the shepherd. He has given you temporary shepherds here to help you in this life, but I want you to know he is your shepherd for all of eternity. Let me show you. First of all, Jesus, the good shepherd, died for the sheep. Jesus, the good shepherd, died for the sheep I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. Secondly, Jesus, the great shepherd, lives for the sheep. Now the God of all peace who brought, who brought up from the dead the great shepherd of the sheep, through the blood of the eternal covenant, even Jesus our Lord. He's called the good shepherd. He's called the great shepherd. That's not all. One more thing. One more thing, and it is right here in 1 Peter where we're at this morning, verse 4. And we find these words, and when the chief shepherd, he's the chief, the chief shepherd appears, you will receive the unfading crown of glory. Jesus, the chief shepherd, comes 
he comes for the sheep one day. And when he comes for the sheep one day, all we under shepherds, all we who served as under shepherds under the chief shepherd, we will receive a crown of glory. Pastor Carl, what is the crown of glory? I don't know. I don't know. But I know it's going to be awesome. Awesome. 